as we move through life, what we focus on changes. We might have gone from being a mother and having to set lots of rules and boundaries for our kids to being a grandmother. And then we get to have the fun aspect of being involved with those children. So it's a very different approach and it's a very different focus that we might have. So what we want to talk about today is thinking about developing some type of road map that helps you age on your terms and what's important to you. So it's about envisaging what that future self is look like, looks like for you. Now, we've probably heard that word longevity because I think it's thrown out there a lot more these days. And, you know, the general meaning of that is that we're going to live a long and fulfilling life. But there's also another terminology that I want to explore, and that's lifespan. So that's, and that's easy to understand. That's just the years that we have. But the one that really stands out for me is health span. And it's a fairly newer type of concept where what we're doing is looking at the quality of the years that we have. So if you think about your future self, or if I think about, you know, my grandparents or my mother, as an example, even though, you know, they've moved through those different stages of life and got to a certain age, you know, the last 10 years of their life or the last five years of their life is not exactly great quality. You know, they're taking, you know, more pills than they want to. They rattle when they walk. Um, they are, you know, restricted for what they can do. If I was to use my grandmother as an example, she couldn't go out without help. She had to have someone shower her. Um, someone had to come in and cook meals for her. Um, so everything slowly got taken away from her. And if I think about my life, um, you know, and if we talk about genetics, you know, the, there's a very strong possibility that I would go down that same path as, you know, my mother, my, my grandmother. And when I had a health issue in my 40s, that to me was there's warning, a warning sign. There's bells ringing here. If you don't change something, this is me talking to myself, if, if you don't change something, what's going to happen is you're going to be in the same situation as what your mother is currently in. You're going to be in the same situation as what happened to your grandmother. And that in itself is what draws me forward, what brings me to how I want to live my life. Am I perfect? No. No. By no stretch of the imagination am I, but I do the very best that I can based on everything else that's happening in my life to help myself live the healthiest life I can so that I have the quality in my life. Mm. Hey, Sue, how are you doing today? Yeah, I'm good, thanks. I like the word quality. Quality is a good good word, isn't it? Mm. 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 Have you ever sat down and envisaged what life might be like as you get older? Yes, I have. Mm -hmm. um, for me, uh, like you, I have genetic issues. I have, um, you know, my parents didn't live beyond their mid-60s. My brother didn't live beyond his mid-60s. Mm. I am now in my mid-60s. Yes. Uh, so for me, it was about... Um, doing what I, you know, so so I, I suppose I had warning like you did. Not everybody has that, but I've got warnings. And so for me, it's about future-proofing my life. So having yeah. a look at 
okay, where am I vulnerable on the health side of things? So knowing my family medical history and yeah. and even before we start the healthy living and lifestyle, it's knowing what sort of screenings you need mm-hmm. to have and should have to you you may you may not prevent these things happening, but you might be able to catch them earlier, or yeah. um, you know those sort of things. And then I come looking at my lifestyle and thinking, well, you know, I quite like living. <laughs> I don't, <laughs> and and I've got a lot to live for. Um, yeah. You know, I've got a loving family. I've got a great partner. I've got grandchildren, friends. You know, I'm very grateful for the life that I have. So Mm. for me, it's upon me to say, well, you know, if I want to have, as you say, that quality of life, what can I do for myself to try and make it the best that I can Mm. without, you know, so that's, I have looked at that for a number of years because of the um, family connection. So a lot of people don't have that. And so therefore they think, oh, you know, I'm going to live till I'm 100 because my mum and dad did or whatever and they didn't have anything wrong with them or or that sort of thing. But, you know, I think that um, for me, knowing those sort of family history and genetic issues was I'm quite lucky to know that so that I can make um, necessary Uh, do the necessary things to keep me healthy as I I like the point that you made and I want to go back to that is like knowing so but it we had the luxury of knowing the family history but knowing what those baselines are we can all find out what they are we can Mm -hmm. all go to a doctor's we can all order certain tests and mm-hmm. we can all review, have them reviewed at, so that we know exactly where we're at. And mm-hmm. and I think what happens, Sue, is it's probably like if we were in our 20s, we're 10 foot tall and bulletproof. Yeah. We don't yeah. think about being a 90-year-old woman. But it tends to hit around the 40s. That's when we start to, you know, maybe pick up a bag and you go, oh, that's that's a bit achy there in my back. What's going on? So we start to get those signs that things are on that aging slippery slope. And so we become more aware of it. We can do one or two things at that point. We can think about it or we can just ignore it and hope it goes away. So I think that's where this uh, concept of reflection and thinking about it and actually acknowledging it and knowing Mm -hmm. it because it's there, it's telling you it's there. So knowing it is that first step. So then if we go, okay, if I'm like this now and I don't do anything to help myself, what am I going to be like in 20 years' time or 40 years' time? Mm. Um, and I know for me you know moving into my 60s all of a sudden it was like hang on a minute I'm moving slower than what I used to Mm. and that's because I have those baselines I've got those measurements I know Mm. you know and I can go back to them and I look at them and I go oh what's going on here okay get moving quickly you can move quicker than this you know Mm. you're just allowing yourself to accept what's happening in your body. You know, that natural ageing process mm. tells us to slow down, mm. but we, we don't have to slow down. No, and there's a lot of women out there and men who are really active. I've got friends who are in there. well, Richard's in his, or he's just in mid-70s and my friend Donna's in her mid-60s and they are very much into hiking and they do yes. the Caminos and all those sort of things and they are very vital people. Um, they're always doing things. So not everyone is just sitting back and not no. doing things. But I think the other important point to um, just before we move on to some a couple of other things is on the medical side of things, mm. just because, you know, a lot of women, well, it, we're talking women, but a lot yeah. of people are going along and we get a full sense of security. Yes, I'm working out. Yes, I'm doing this. Yes, I'm doing that. Yeah. And then yeah. suddenly you get something and you go, oh, 
well, why is this happening to me? Because mm. Mm. I've tried to do everything I can. Um, but I think it's that complacency that can come in. So as I said, for me, it's been that family thing ticking. And as I've got closer to my mid 60s, I'm thinking, oh, gosh, you know, I don't dwell on it all the time. But, you know, that gives me a, a, a point to look at. But I think if you don't have that, you go along, you think, oh, yeah, I'm feeling pretty good and there's nothing too wrong. And then suddenly something happens. So for me, it's having those regular checkups. And as you say, the baseline, not just in medical, but in your physical capabilities as well. That's yeah. why, you know, usually, what is it, once a quarter or something, we give the ladies a bit yeah. of a, a, a foundation, foundation type test. Assessment, uh, yeah. Yeah, assessment so that they know where they're at and they might see oh gee you know i've i've really improved since last time oh you know this time last year i was doing this and now mm. i've dropped back so is it complacency or is there something else wrong so you know i think um it's very important to have those um markers yeah totally there is and i was just thinking about a really good book if you're a bit of a geek like i am um, Dr. Peter Atia has a great book called Outlive mm. and it's, it can be a really good reference book as well too. So you can go to different parts in the book and actually read it as opposed to reading the whole thing. So it's a, it's a pretty hefty read, um, but it's definitely great because it does talk about, you know, those three uh, things that eventually we succumb to in life. So, and what we want to do is ensure that we're doing everything we can do to push them back and to then be able to, if we do get them, um, be able to live with them and have that quality of life mm. as opposed to um, just simply accepting it, as you said, and doing nothing to improve it. Mm -hmm. Mm. And also, I mean, getting to when you retire, it's a great time. And now that we don't have, well, COVID isn't, yeah, it's well, it's always going to be there, but, you know, mm. people are still are starting to travel now. And I had a friend say to me, oh, you know, I just travelled up to see my uh, grandchildren. And I was thinking, wow, if I want to do travelling, I'm going to have to do some work on lifting these bags. And she said, you know, uh, being a solo traveller, um, you don't have someone with you to help get the bag off the carousel. And, you know, <laughs> a gentleman helped her. But, you know, uh, you're not always going to get that. Or what if you've got to carry a bag upstairs or things like that? These little things that are going to detract from your enjoyment of life because yeah. you aren't keeping up your strength and um you know, your basic foundational movements. So that all comes down to it as well because your quality of life comes down again. I want to do travel, but, oh, I can't unless I've got someone that can carry my bags for me. Yeah, I know. I remember one of our clients actually saying that, you know, um, they said, what is that exercise? Why am I doing that exercise? And I said, helps you put your, um, you know, bag in the overhead locker on the plane. And they said, oh, I got my husband to do that. And I said, yeah, well, what if he's not around? How are you going to do it? Mm. <laughs> so, and it was like, oh, okay, I, I do need to think about that. And yes, I do need to do that exercise as much as I hate doing it. Uh, mm. Yeah, I do need to do it. And we often get asked those questions. What is that exercise good for? Mm. And that's what they call functional movement. So exercising for how we move in life or the things that we're going to need to do in mm. life mm. Mm. that's right and um it's it's amazing that people don't associate the exercises we give them with what they do in life until you point it out to them but mm. uh, you know with squatting for example you've got to sit on a chair and get up or you've got to go to the toilet or we'll get up you know so if you can't do yeah. the squats what's going to happen there and i think the other thing is um obviously you know, some people can't help it. You know, they've got an illness or something that yeah. uh, they, you know, need 
physical help with. But, you know, we don't, for me, I really want to be independent. I, as long as I can, I don't necessarily want my husband or my family or anyone else to have to be helping me to go to the bathroom or helping me to do, have a shower or to do things like that. Unless, of course, I'm just completely um, not able to do that. But, yeah. you know, I think it's important to be independent and and to keep yourself being able to do things because um, that way you're not relying on anyone else to for your own um, life, really. Yeah, I, I was just thinking about, so we recently went skiing and, and Paul had, had only just basically got out of hospital and, you know, he can't use one hand and so it was like, you know, we're packing the bags and he's gone, just use a bigger suitcase and I've gone, no, we're not using a bigger suitcase. We're just going to pack to this little suitcase and this little suitcase because what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be linking those two suitcases together with that backpack and my bag and you're going to be just handling your little bag. So I'm going to be able to handle all this stuff. Mm -hmm. So it's important that, you know, we don't take unnecessary things when we go and it's important to think about it because I've got to be able to lug that you know, what ended up being like 50 kilos, I had to be mm. able to do it. Mm. So, yeah. And I think travel is somewhere where it, um, and I don't know if we're going off track here or not, but okay. I just want to point out that I've had a couple of friends and their husbands gone over to Europe <clears throat> and both husbands are fit. You know, they work out, do all of that. Both of them tripped over, you know, the cobbled yeah. stones and things yes. like that broke wrists, broke arms, had, you know, one had to come home for mm. surgery. Um, and that's because even someone fit and healthy yes. can trip. So oh, if, you're not, if, if you're not strong on your feet, if you don't have hold yourself strong, mm. you know, your posture is good, you, you've got that core control. If you don't have that, you're more prone to having these accidents when you're away and, and you know, you don't want to be on the other side of the world having having a fall or um, mm. those sort of things happening. Yeah, I, I love that you mentioned that, Sue, because um, one of the things that we, that will, that does decline as we're ageing is balance. Mm. Um, but for many of us, we don't do any type of balance work. And if you think about someone who might currently be fit and healthy, for example, those gentlemen you're talking about, they may very well have been, for example, runners and they might have run on the road. It's a nice mm. flat surface. Yeah, yeah. Whereas if we can expose ourselves to, to different, different types of um, terrain, yeah. surfaces and terrain, then what's going to happen there is we're teaching our body to stay in uh, that upright position when we're moving like that. Um, mm. And I know I often work, walk through grass because what that does is that that makes sure that I'm keeping balance, but it also is having me lift my feet higher. Um, mm. And that's one of the things that can definitely go as we, you know, hit our 70s, that range of motion. So we, yeah. you know, we get that little old person's shuffle thing happening. Yeah. 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 So we want to be conscious of lifting those those feet up as well too. So, mm. yeah, mm. There's, there's a lot of things that we can think about. So when we're exercising, we want to have that really solid all-round approach to this future life that we have you know what are the things i need it's not just about you know going to a pilates class or doing a run for example it's about okay i i do those things because i love them but what are the other things that i'm going to need to do the next aspect of that that you mentioned sue is the fact that i when you go to fall do you know how to fall properly do you think most of the time, you know, a young child never really hurts themselves when no. they fall? It's just, you know, that it just happens. And I recently, oh, probably 18 months ago now, I was in high heel shoes, which I rarely wear these days. But mm. um, I, the toe of my of my shoe 
hit a piece of concrete that was sticking up. And so I started to go and my mind was instantly going, don't put your hands down, mm. just go loose. Mm. <laughs> and I, I, I hit the ground and I thought, ah, oh, I've got white pants on. I'm mm. going to be dirty. I will have put a hole in them. You know, all of those thoughts go through your head. I popped up, got up, pants were sparkling clean and there was not a hole in them. And it was like, that's good. And everyone's, you know, my mum was there and a few other people, they're going, you're all right. And I've gone, I'm good. You know, mm. I didn't put my hands out to stop me mm. because mm. I knew if I hit my hand that way, I'm probably going to break it. Mm. Mm. That's right. But that's a natural <clears throat> instinct, isn't it? But yeah. I think... Um, you know, the whole thing we've been talking about is um, envisaging what our life's going to be like yeah. in the future. It's never too late to make changes oh, to, okay. to have that because if you're saying, I, I want to go on a, you know, I've had a dream and I'm using travel, but it could be anything, but yeah. I've had a dream that I want to go on a travel, you know, I, I want to travel, but I can't lift my bag and the backpack hurts. Well, I'm not going for another six to twelve months. So, what yes. can I do today to prepare for that? Now, you've you've got ladies that you you've we've known who do those you know multi day walks and yes. things like that, but they've had to pull out because they haven't done the training for it. Mm. So, you know, you've got to think about what you want your future to be like. Do you want to be playing with your grandchildren? Do you want to be joining? Yes. You know. Rotary or one of those service organizations do you want to be traveling you know there's so many things we can do these days but if your body isn't capable of moving properly you're not you know it just narrows your life right down uh, and I think that's another good point Sue when you're envisaging what that future life will look like you know what your 90s is going to be look be looking like think about also what's my social circle you know mm. where, because that is also a really important part of it, you know, our emotional and mental state. You know, where we are designed as humans to be in a tribe environment. We want mm. people around us. So if we are hanging out with people that are our age, you know, then, you know, they're going to be getting older as well too. So hanging out with people who are a little bit younger certainly is means that you know that social circle that we have is definitely being widened mm, and mm. so when we get into those future years that we've got those people around us as well too and that's what it's about Sue that's what we're talking about here is you know when I get to my 90s what do I want to be able to do who's going to be with me when I'm at that age, you know, mm, how mm. am I going to live? And am, am I going to be sitting at home looking at four walls or am I going to be that 90 year old woman who's skiing the slopes if mm, that's what mm. you want to do? Mm. So it's like, okay, take the moment to reflect on what you want that life to look like. And then from there, come back and think about, what are the things that I need to focus on now or what are the things that I need to focus on right now that I can't do that I'm wanting to do when I'm this age, mm. you know, because mm. they're the first, that's the first port of call that they are the first things that I need to do. Then what I need to do is develop that, that next plan of, you know, what do I need to do in order to make sure that I'm still living life that way? Mm, mm, exactly. Yeah, for sure. Do you have anything you want to wrap up with, Sue? No, no, just um, maybe take some time today to start planning. Think about what you want from the future and then start thinking about how what you've got to do to get there. Yeah, I also think that... There are a couple of very quick points. So what's your focus? Okay, so, you know, you might be, might call that goals or something like that. So what are the things that I want to be able to do? The next thing is to make sure that you prioritise your health and understand where you're at and where you want to be. 
develop a mindset that is one of resilience and adaptability so that you are not so rigid in your approach. Mm. Make sure you're thinking about, you know, your emotional and your mental well-being. And and I think one of the biggest ones is having a sense of purpose. If we don't have a mm. reason to get out of bed, yep. we're not going to get out of bed. No, no. And that doesn't mean you have to have, you know, every hour of every day no. booked up. But it just means something every day for you to help you get up and, and you know, get the most out of life. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Thanks for joining me today, Sue. Yeah, thanks for having me. Oh, you're very welcome. Thanks for joining us today, ladies. We'll see you all soon. Bye for now. Bye, ladies. Bye.